Welcome back to Always Learning. What are we doing today? Today we are making pretzels and I'm super excited because I love a good pretzel and they're easy to make. You probably got all the ingredients at home except for maybe the yeast, but if you got yeast on hand, you're ready to go. So all you're going to need is four cups of flour and that'll make about eight uh, good sized pretzels. You need a little bit of butter. You need some coarse salt to put on top. You need a little sugar. You're just going to need uh, two tablespoons, uh, one packet of active yeast and some baking soda. You need, I think, uh, two-thirds uh, cup of baking soda, and that we're gonna add that later. The whole process is simple. You're gonna take a, a cup and a half of water, warm water between 110 and 115 degrees. If you wanna make beer pretzels, you simply use a beer. Most people use a dark or an amber beer, but it's 12 ounces, and you're gonna heat that beer up to about 110 degrees. <clears throat> Once you get it to 110 degrees, you're gonna add your yeast, you're gonna add your sugar. We'll set that aside, let that get frothy. It takes about five to 10 minutes. And then we'll, we'll mix that with our flour and start making our dough. And then once you get the dough, you've got to let it set for about 45 minutes so it rises. We'll pound that down, make it into the pretzel strips. While we're doing that, we'll heat the oven up to 450. And we'll also put 10 cups of water in a pot and right before we do it, we will add the baking soda. That's what gives pretzels their kind of twangy taste. So that's really it. Um, we'll get crack lacking. First thing you're going to do is you're going to take one and a half cups of warm water around 100 to 110 degrees. Put that in a bowl. You want to kind of get this bowl already kind of warm with warm water so the bowl's not cold so your water doesn't get cold. And then we're just going to take one rapid yeast pack that you can get at Dillon's or really any store and you're just going to put all that in there and then we're going to come back and we're going to take one tablespoon of sugar you can use white sugar brown sugar you could even use <clears throat> honey if you wanted to we're just giving food for that yeast to start eating and start frothing to get some of the yeast going and I'm just going to kind of stir it with what I got handy which is just this little thermometer. <clears throat> While we're setting the yeast aside we're going to mix about half. We're, we got four cups of flour so you're just going to mix maybe put two in the blender or the mixer bowl to start off with. Then we're going to mix in one tablespoon, no I take that back, teaspoon of salt. I always get those confused. I guess it really doesn't matter if you like salt, tablespoon, teaspoon, tomato, tomato. Um, so I'm going to mix that in. You kind of mix it in with the two cups of flour and then off you go. And then uh, once you kind of get that mixed in, once that's mixed in, now we're going to add our froth, which has been sitting there for, I don't know, five, ten minutes, whatever, whatever it takes. And then you just kind of start mixing that together, kind of get a good good smooth base going it just if you kind of put the put the yeast water in um, before you put all the flour in it just kind of helps it thicken up and absorb a lot of that water so it's not sloshing around then we're going to put on that mystical magical dough hook how it works no one really knows but uh, the captain hook uh, dough hook goes on. Um, you're going to set the bowl in there. Like I said, we've got half the flour left. We're going to try to run this on. I was getting a little scared, so I was running on like a two speed, and then I'll crank it up to a four once this baby gets humming. You're just going to kind of let this go, kind of do its thing, work its speed, and then you're going to add in the uh, the butter, which is always good. Um, some people don't think you need as much butter, but you do. It's like two... I think it's two um, tablespoons of butter is what it is. Put in a little more, that's that's fine. You want a little bit left over to kind of use to coat the pretzels when they come out. And then we're just going to slowly add in the other flour. I always get it. It always blows up on me and goes everywhere. But um, if you're good, you could you could probably get this get this done. I always have to come back and add a little flour because I lose a little. Once all the flour's in, then just let this baby do its thing. You'll see it kind of shaping, coming looking like a ball. You want to kind of test it. It shouldn't be sticky. If it is, it's not that big a deal. You just come back, add a little bit more flour to it. If, it's, um, if you think it's too dry, just add a little bit of water, a little bit of oil, and run it for another minute. Um, 
and then uh, pro move is you should put uh, flour on your hand before you take this thing off so it doesn't stick but I'm not a pro so I just get um, dough on my hands and then we're just going to take it put a little flour out on the granite or out on your your table pull the dough out throw it down like I said a pro move would be to put flour in your hands but I'm no pro so um, come back and then you just start working kneading the dough for two or three minutes put a little flour on it help kind of get all that stuff off there your pretzels taste better if you have uh, a little bit of hand oil in them not to gross everybody out but and then you just work it get it into a nice tight ball um, smooth ball there's this thing called the window pane test where you pull it and you can kind of see through the dough i just may if it if it's good and round and looks kind of smooth i i say it's good and that's good enough for me uh, you can always, if it's getting sticky, you always put more flour and just kind of mix that in and knead that flour kind of into it. Once you get into a ball, you put a little oil in any kind of really uh, dish or pan bowl that you have. Um, get that spread around. You're just trying to keep the um, dough ball from sticking. We're going to throw it in there. You can cover it with a towel. I've just got this salad lid, so I'm going to throw it on there. Don't tell mom. And then... Um, you just let it set for about 45 minutes, and it should double in size. If it lasts longer than that, I mean, if it if you if it goes for an hour, it's it's fine. You can also just do it overnight um, in the fridge if you're going to make pretzels the next day for the game. That's probably what I'm going to do next time. I'll make the dough the night before, so all I've got to do is give it a little bath and do that. So you punch it down, and then when you punch it down, you're going to put more flour on there because it's going to get sticky. You don't want to stick to your countertop. And then you're simply going to throw the, the dough ball down, fold it a couple times, get it back into a nice uh, ball, and then we're going to cut it into eight pieces. And if you have this really cool um, kind of square blade, it looks cooler and better. It looks like you kind of really know what you're doing, but I don't have one of those. I don't even know what they're called. I think they're like a chef's block. But I don't have it, so I'm going to use this, this big knife. And you're just going to cut it into uh, eight pieces. Then you start to roll the dough. Um, you're just going to roll each one of these eight little pieces out. It's kind of like Play-Doh in school. You're going to make this big, long 24-inch worm, probably about the size of your thumb if you're a normal-sized uh, person. And if you want to be really anal retentive, you can measure, um, like I said, it, 22 to 24 inches if you want bigger pretzels make them smaller if you want smaller pretzels thinner pretzels i should say then roll them out longer i was really amazed at how much the dough ended up rising like i thought these um, things would be a, maybe a little bit bigger than when i rolled them out but they ended up to be like three times the size which was fine they tasted fine but once you get them to 24 inches then you're gonna flip them into a u kind of shape thing cross them and then cross them again and then take those two ends and just pull them back towards you and put them somewhere on the little circle you're kind of making a peace sign almost and push them down if they don't stick add a little water mine didn't stick it wasn't that big a deal they still were edible now that you've gotten them all rolled out you should have 10 cups of water on the stove already boiling they magically happen in this video and then you take two-thirds a cup of baking soda and you're going to put that uh, in the water and it instantly transform it into uh, pixie dust uh, that makes the pretzels taste amazing i don't know how it actually works but that's the process so once you get that in there you're going to give the pretzels a little 20 minute 20 second bath in the boiling uh, baking soda water just 20 seconds all it takes um, I dropped them in there because I'm a real man and just used my hand, but you want to be careful because you can get some boiling water on your on your fingers. Uh, I thought they'd stick to the spoon, so I just kind of did them that way. And then once they're in there, like I said, 20 seconds, hand count it uh, if you're a referee, and then you take them out and you simply set them on the little pan. And you're going to do that with all eight of them if you made the recipe uh, correctly. And here they are, they're just sitting there floating in there. You can dunk them down a little bit. It doesn't matter. You can see mine are starting to kind of lose their shape. But they looked like an edible roll when some of them got done, which is was even really better. I somehow missed giving them an egg wash. But you just take an egg, put it in a little cup. 
get a little brush and brush that on there and then take some flaked sea salt, sprinkle that on there, and then put them in the oven at 450 for 12 minutes. Maybe 14 minutes would have been better, but they came out looking like money. And then when I um, took them out, I went ahead, like every great American, I gave them a little butter bath. Uh, just this is what the egg wash would look like, but I'm giving them a butter bath now. And then, of course, I used a little more um, sea salt on top of them just to make sure I, in case I knock some of it off. And that is it. They were ready to go and uh, look amazing. All right, so we pulled them out of the oven for 450 for 12 minutes. If I did it again, I'd probably cook them a little longer. They, they got kind of crazy big. I don't know if I let my yeast set too long or what the deal was. But anyway, I'm going to try this um, sharp cheddar pub cheese I got at Dylan's, and then this white cheddar cheese here that I've got mixed up. But <clears throat> let's do the taste test and see how it does. It look, looks pretty done, pretty stretchy. We'll go with the white sauce. Pretty good for the first time. Anyway, try it. I'll put the recipe below. Thanks for watching. P.S. I forgot to mention, you can uh, freeze these or put them in the refrigerator. And then I popped them in the air fryer after they're in the refrigerator at 320 for about three minutes. And they were money. But you can store them in the freezer for up to uh, three months, either in the dough form or in the pretzel form. And then you can come back, and at that point, I would I would let them dethaw from the uh, freezer, and then uh, put them in the oven for um, I don't know, kind of experiment with the time. And they're supposed to be just as good as when uh, they came out the first time. So anyway, thanks for watching.